right. Good morning. Uh, my name is Russell Ralston. I'm the Deputy Program Manager of UVA at Action Space. In the suit here this morning is Jim Stein. Uh, Jim is uh, an extraordinary engineer. He's a chief engineer on uh, our team. So we gave him the honors. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We, we gave Jim the honors of demonstrating the suit this morning. I'm going to give him this, uh, this little walking staff here. Um, we are in Earth gravity. We're not on the moon, if anybody doesn't know. Um, on the moon, the gravity is about one-sixth of what it is here. So just in case Jim loses his balance, for safety reasons, we want him to have that. But So I'm going to talk through the suit design uh, just very briefly. And as I do that, uh, Jim's going to perform some different um, actions, mobility, to, to demonstrate the mobility of the suit. Uh, before, we, before we get into that, though, I want to talk about this cover layer. So the cover layer that you see, the, the black, the orange, the blue, um, personally, I think this looks amazing. Uh, I want to thank Esther Marquise for helping us design this. Esther is um, a designer, a spacesuit designer on the show For All Mankind, if anyone has seen that on Apple TV+. Plus. Um, so, so this suit has a lot of that worked into this. Um, one of the differences between this suit and the suit that will be on the moon is that it will, the moon suit will mostly be white. So we'll replace all the black with white. And that's really for thermal reasons, so didn't want anybody to, to get that mixed up. Um, but other than that, I think this is just a fantastic, fantastic looking suit. So let me, let me go top to bottom here um, and just describe the suit overall. So we'll start with the light band. I think you guys saw the lights as Jim walked out on stage. Uh, on, the light band is mounted to the visor assembly and to the helmet bubble. Uh, and this, this essentially gives the astronauts lights to see whether they're in shaded portions of the moon or if they're in low Earth orbit. In a night pass, they can turn on these lights to see um, using tools or translating on the space station or anything like that. We also have on the side here, we have a HD video camera. So those of us back on Spaceship Earth watching the EVA uh, will be able to watch it in high definition, which will be a fantastic upgrade, I think, from, <clears throat> from current day technology. All of this is mounted on the helmet bubble. Um, which is amounted to what we call, in this configuration of our suit, the hard upper torso. So the hard upper torso goes roughly from Jim's waist up to the top. And uh, this is kind of the core structure of the suit. It's what we attach everything to. Um, so the arms, we'll talk about the backpack in a minute. So yeah, if Jim wants to demonstrate some of the arm mobility here, um, this really just provides us, again, some structure to mount things to. Each of the arms have a variety of uh, mobility joints and elements that we've designed uh, at Axiom, uh, including the gloves. The gloves are a critical um, part of the suit design, especially for microgravity EVAs where you're using them for hours at a time to translate, to operate tools, to you know, fix things to the suit, and so on. So we put a ton of effort into those gloves, pretty, pretty proud of where they're at, and are confident those are going to perform uh, very well. If Jim turns to the side here, um, some people may be wondering, hey, how do you even get in this suit? Uh, there's a hatch on the back, actually. You can see two hinges here. So this suit's a little bit different than the suits of uh, kind of today that's used on the space station. So this is called a rear entry design or a back entry design. This hatch would open up. Um, you would put your feet in, put your arms in, and then kind of shimmy down into the suit. And then we would close the hatch. Um, mounted to the hatch is this box, affectionately known as the backpack. Uh, we call it the, the portable life support system. So inside of this box are all the parts and the components to keep, to kind of keep you alive while you're doing EVA. You can think of it as like a very fancy scuba tank and air conditioner kind of combined into one. Um, so on the lower torso, so let's start kind of from the waist going down to the, to the boots. Um, I'll let Jim do some squats and lunges and, and, and just show off some of the uh, some of the mobility uh, that the suit has and demonstrate some different movements. There's a variety of joints that we've put <clears throat> as well into the lower torso assembly. And this is going to be a huge improvement over the Apollo suits. The Apollo suits didn't have many of these types of joints that we've put in this suit. So the astronauts will be more comfortable, have an easier time walking, performing tasks, um, getting down to like to pick up a rock or something like that or use a geology tool. Um, and then the other thing that, uh, yeah, that's a great, great demonstration there by Jim. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is the boots. The boots are a critical, uh, critical part of the suit, especially for the, the Artemis III mission and missions to the, the, the south pole of the moon. Um, we'll be entering regions called permanently shadowed regions. These are regions of the moon that never see sunlight, and they're very, very cold. And so it's very important that we insulate the boots uh, appropriately to keep the astronauts' feet um, uh, comfortable during the EVA. That's a portion of the design. There's, there's, um, as, as Mr. Suffragini mentioned, there's many portions of this design that we've that we've kind of adopted from XEMU and are continuing to refine. That's a, that's an excellent portion. The, the XEMU team did a tremendous job, and a lot of our teammates did a tremendous job designing those boots. So we're taking those forward and refining them to flight. Um, those are a, a really a key aspect of the suit. <clears throat> 